everyone. Uh, this is Dawn Raider, and welcome to this episode of Better Than Wolves Red. Hello, everyone. This is Dawn Raider, and welcome to this Better Than Wolves Redstone tutorial. So, you can probably gather based off of what is in front of me what uh, we're going to be going over today. Today, we are going to be going over various different kiln designs. Now, I got some feedback about just for tutorials, for clarity's sake, swapping over to vanilla texture pack, so I've done that here as you can see. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. So, these first two designs are pretty similar. They are both general, just like, starter sort of setups that you would use early on when you only had like one bellows and you wanted to get everything as dense as you possibly could. So this design right here you can get three kiln spots, and you can fit a cauldron and a crucible right here. You can swap these around. A couple benefits of doing it this way. One, you get something in the center that has the benefit of all nine hibachis down there. The other benefit is these open-topped kilns here, which, if I come here and grab something like a block of iron ore, you could do this. And you can stack these up. When that finishes, they will fall down and kick the item into either the cauldron or crucible that's sitting in the center right there. You can also, if you wanted to, uh, take that out and replace it with a fourth kiln. But again, this is designed for early game when you are just working off of one bellows. Uh, this other design is fairly similar. This one is working more towards kiln space, so this one has six spots instead of the three spots for a kiln over there. The downside of this is that it's not possible to do that sort of stacking, uh, which, by the way, I have to credit uh, Harako for that idea. I did not come up with that myself. Um, but yeah, the other disadvantage of this being that nothing can take advantage of that center spot because you can't access a crucible or, or cauldron that have a block above them. Uh, and this block is required for those middle kilns there to actually function. Uh, but yeah, these should be pretty self-explanatory with how to build. I can do just a quick flyby here. It's mostly just the concept of where to place all the bricks and everything. Now this one is more of a mid-game sort of setup. So you can see we have a significant number of kiln spots here. This is a tube kiln, which lets you cook 14 items at once. Uh, this is actually another design that I got from the Discord. I don't remember exactly who came up with it. I don't know if it was Hirako or Sock thing. It might have been Mason as well. Um, but anyways, the concept behind this you would come here, place all your stuff along the sides there, close it up, and then it would cook. As these finish cooking, they'll pop off, and the water streams will come through, drop them into this crucible here. Now, the reason that I'm leaving out these two hibachis here, it does make these front kilns just a tiny bit slower. Um, but that's not a huge deal, just because uh, the difference between an 8 and a 9 isn't that big. Certainly not enough to let the items behind it despawn. In fact, if you wanted to be super cost-saving, you could do something like that, knock those out, and just have everything be running at 8 times speed. Uh, yeah, then you can just have water source coming in the back here and redirect down this way. Now, there's a couple downsides to this. There are a few items you can put in the kiln that will break from water. So if I come here and grab, let's say like bread dough, that one. That is news to me. I had always assumed that that would break off, never mind. I'm pretty sure there's something that does though. Does a cake pop off? Oh, well, never mind. It turns out that everything you can cook in something like that, you can cook in this. Oh, which does include like pottery and apparently cake, bread, that kind of thing. I think it might be 
If we come to bricks, though, I don't think this can make bricks. No, this cannot make bricks. Okay, so I wasn't crazy. There are some things that I can't do. Uh, but yeah, then on to a more late game solution is a fully automated system right here. Uh, this one, this, I've got a couple of different designs for this. So this one right here that just has the built-in control logic for everything. This one is tile, or not, it's tile. If you leave a one block space, you can just take this and put it next to each other, tiling it. You do have to put the one block space, because otherwise this block dispenser rests against that buddy block, which throws off the whole system. Uh, this system, which is a bit cheaper to do, uh, I guess cheaper to do in large quantities, but it's not quite as versatile as that one is this right here, which uses the exact same design as over there, using this control logic, but it has these units here, which can be tiled uh, directly next to each other, so it is significant space savings, about twice as efficient for each of these that you add after. Uh, but this is dependent on the single control, uh, control module there. So if you have, say, multiple things in here that you're trying to cook, but this one isn't cooking anything, then it's not gonna work at all. So you just always have to make sure that the thing that has the most items to cook is this one. This one also doesn't let you cook items with different cook timers. So there's, you have your fastest cooking items like bread, uh, cake, food items like that. Slower items are things like clay and pottery. I guess in uh, default by the rules, you can't really cook anything else at that speed. In deco add-on, you can, like uh, the terracotta. Uh, but then the longest cook time is for ores. So it's the same kind of, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's even the same time ratio. I'm not sure exactly for um, cooking it in an, in an oven. So the other thing is this can't cook things with multiple independent cooking timers. Well, tiling this module can. Uh, but yeah, how this works is basically block dispenser puts a block down there. Uh, buddy block does not actually detect most blocks being placed. It detects a few, like if you place a block dispenser right now. I don't know exactly the cause for that. Uh, but then when this breaks, it sends a signal up to here. This block dispenser acts as a very compact T flip-flop. Actually, no, not a T flip-flop. I think, yeah, this is just a memory cell. And so it only triggers the rest of the circuit on every other uh, trigger of the buddy block, which is important because when this triggers, this lifts up. I have this block removed just for visibility. That would have to be a brick block like that in the final design. Uh, but yeah, that pulls that up uh, just a little bit later, it pushes that out, and then it pulls them back, and then places a block with this block dispenser. Now, the reason that we have this uh, memory cell right there is because the buddy block activates again when that piston pushes. So let me de demonstrate here. The clay is just a stand-in for like pottery or something like that. So, the buddy block just detects whenever it's done cooking, and that pushes the item. It's very important, one, to have this block be missing here, and you also need to fill it with something that doesn't have collision. Uh, so, you could use something like a button, or a lever, or something like that. Uh, let me set that to daytime real fast. Uh, the reason that that's important is stoked fire can occasionally have fire blocks attached to it, which would put fire in this block, which means that the item falling down would burn up. But placing something, a block there that's non-flammable and collidable, like button, lever, um, those are the main ones that I can come up with right now. Uh, that will block the fire from uh, spawning right there without impeding the uh, item from falling down. And yeah, so let's get to a uh, tutorial of how to build these.
Okay, so starting out with this grid of eight hibachis, you are going to want to make your kiln like that with a block dispenser facing into it and then grab a buddy block right there and face it, pl uh, place it facing that way. Then run blocks out like that. Another one there, grab a slab and place it right there and redstone along the whole thing right there. Then place a repeater on one tick right there. That is not what I wanted to do. See, that's the same as block dispensers activating buddy blocks. There we go. Block dispenser facing up, put a torch and then a solid block and then place a block right there and you are also going to want to come to place a sticky piston right there and sticky piston right there then place a torch right there solid blocks there and there with torches there and there redstone dust on top of both of those then place blocks right there redstone dust and all right, that was, oh, it's because that was a uh, dot, not a line right there. So it was activating that piston, okay. Uh, but yeah, so that is now that design. Just put a hopper right there and then you can have the mechanical power coming out however you like. I just have it set up like this, which makes it tileable with a single row extending along. To make this uh, section over here, you're going to want to grab some some hibachis and extend them like that and then place your kiln again and a block dispenser again facing this way. Now place pistons the same as the other kiln like that. And then we are going to take blocks up here, which actually another disadvantage of tiling it this way, it does extend the footprint up by one block. Uh, but then we will take this down like that and, sorry, let me double check exactly how I did that. Okay. Yeah. So just like that, put a repeater there on one tick. Put that into the block dispenser and then we are going to take that line of redstone and bring it along there. So because of the quirks of pistons, that will actually power that piston so you don't need to worry about routing that any differently. And then that is it for that design. Uh, for this one in particular, you want to place a block right there just to make sure that the kiln item doesn't get spit out that way. But then you can just repeat that as many times as you like, barring redstone dust running out of power, which means uh, you would just want to place a redstone repeater in between the uh, in between each of the instances. So like you could put one right there, put one right there, and then for this you would probably want to put one. Actually, I didn't wire that up. So if we wire that up, you'd want to put that one right there. So you can just put repeaters like that to be able to extend it even further. Uh, by the way, I actually forgot to mention one particular very important thing. These uh, hoppers and gearboxes and everything like that need to be protected from fire because when these hibachis are turned on, these will burn if you don't put non-flammable blocks around them. Which, unfortunately, does include the top of the hoppers. In which case, I just take something like a button, put them up there. Actually, I'd probably do it. Something like that. Then you can block all of that in. Um, and yeah, for the other sides, just make sure that there's blocks covering them all. 
on all sides just because that will stop fire from being able to spread to them. Uh, but anyways, uh, I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.